Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Templeton Blackburn Alumni Memorial Auditorium. At this time, we would like to direct your attention to the emergency exits located at the sides and rear of the auditorium. In case of emergency, please leave the auditorium through the nearest exit. As a courtesy to our performers and patrons, we ask that all mobile devices be turned off at this time. In the interest of ensuring an orderly event, audience members are asked to refrain from engaging in conduct that could disrupt the event. Anyone engaging in disruptive behavior will be subject to removal. Once again, welcome to the Templeton Blackburn Alumni Memorial Auditorium, and we hope you enjoy this event. University Ceremonial Mace and Faculty Senate Chair Dr. Joe McLaughlin. This Ohio University Ceremonial Mace 
was designed for President Emeriti Robert Glidden's investiture ceremony in 1994 by the late David R. Klon, Ohio University Professor of Art. The arrival of the mace marks the official opening of this Ohio University Presidential Investiture Ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the advancement of the colors and join Assistant Professor of Voice Kelly Burns and Associate Lecturer of Voice Deborah Rents for the National Anthem.
Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Jeanetta King, Chair of the Ohio University Board of Trustees, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the investiture ceremony of Ohio University's 21st president. We are a remarkable institution. You probably noticed from the video monitors that as the procession was making its way to the Templeton Blackburn Alumni Memorial Auditorium from the John C. Baker University Center, the pathway we walked was lined with flags. 102 flags to be exact. 102 flags for all the countries represented by Ohio University students. We are so proud of the diverse global community that we have here at Ohio University. This event marks an historic and exciting moment in our storied 213 year history. A moment that has only occurred 21 times since our founding in 1804. It is such an honor to have so many distinguished guests with us today. Many of you have traveled great distances to be with us, and Ohio University thanks you. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the members of Dr. Nellis's family who are with us this afternoon. I would ask that each of you stand as I call your name, Dr. Nellis's wife and our First Lady, Ruthie Nellis. and his sister, Linda, and her husband, Gordon Melvin. We welcome you. On the stage this afternoon, we have a number of distinguished guests that I would ask to stand if you are able when you are recognized. And audience, I would ask you to please hold your applause until the end of the recognitions. The Ohio University Board of Trustees and its officers, Chair of the Ohio University Alumni Association Board. Chair of the Presidential Search Committee. Interim Executive Vice President and Provost. Athens and Regional Campus Deans. Presidents and Chairpersons of the University Senates. Our keynote speaker, author of the inauguration poem, Ohio University's 18th President, and Ohio University's 21st president, Dr. Dwayne Nellis. Thank you, and you can be seated. I am delighted to now welcome some of the many other distinguished guests who have joined us today. We have delegates from higher education institutions around the country and around the world in the audience. Thank you all for being here, especially the delegation that traveled the greatest distance, Chubu University from Japan, one of Ohio University's most valued international partners. All delegates, please stand if you are able and be recognized, and welcome to Athens. Thank you. Also making up the processional, we have the faculty of Ohio University who went the extra mile today, donned regalia, and participated in the academic procession. Thank you all for your contribution to making this a memorable day, and we ask that you please stand and be recognized. Now I would like to recognize other special guests in the audience. Please stand if you are able when your group's name is called and keep standing until all are introduced. Audience, again, I ask that you please hold your applause until the end. The Presidential Search Committee, President's Council, the Student Senate, the Graduate Student Senate, the Faculty Senate, the Classified Senate, the Administrative Senate, Distinguished Professors, Faculty of Ohio University, Emeriti Faculty of Ohio University, Current and Emeriti Members of the Foundation Board, Current and Emeriti Members of the Ohio University Alumni Board, 
a maritime members of the Ohio University Board of Trustees, government leaders, and the Presidential Inauguration Planning Committee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce today's first speaker, Scott Menar, English professor on the Lancaster campus and a three-time proud Ohio alumnus. Dr. Menar has written an original poem entitled The Lamp Carrier to commemorate this momentous occasion. Dr. Menar. Thank you very much. It's wonderful when poetry can take the stage. This poem is titled, excuse me. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know my gown would go awry. This poem is titled, The Lamp Carrier. I've been thinking about the geography of learning and how that map has no edges, is defined only by the sight of the learner. It is a heart, of course, a beating wing over the high plains of someone's thought. I imagined once a place in Robert Frost's world or Emily Dickinson's, where the thin line of a person's life might arrive here, in words and teaching that are like distant lightning on the horizon of what we may become. It was, as my teacher put it, only marvelous that singing about fences and trains and good neighbors, something to build on there in libraries late at night. A map may expand or reduce but it must be followed as one proto-human led another down a forest trail long ago. These students grow and must be replaced as we were moved by winds across our fields of light, turned out to a world as a kite is lifted and held against a gust that might raise it. Another way to say this is that the lamp carrier is needed. He or she agrees to bear us, though the light marks him or her as well for all to see. And every day is a challenge to use it right, to follow and lead too. Religio doctrina civilitas prae omnibus virtus. Religion, learning, civility, above all virtue, which is just another way of saying the word love after all and in the beginning. Let us inaugurate this in our hearts and carry it here and outward for everyone. As the sea carries its child, the waves, and the wind carries all of us eventually in a pride of flying autumn leaves, the invisible future too, finally back to the ground it came from, where sunlight illuminates a nature we can only praise in its wondrous direction where the river is going, where the clouds go. Thank you, Dr. Menard. I now ask the leadership of our five representative bodies to make their way forward to offer greetings and well wishes on behalf of their constituents. On behalf of all Ohio University students, undergraduate, graduate, and medical, I am honored to welcome you, Dr. Nellis, to our Bobcat family. We strongly believe that you're up to the task to be our president. So to help you and your administration achieve all of your goals, we have included in this bill a list of requests on behalf of the 12 student senate commissions <laughs> that represent the needs of their constituents. We hope that we can work hand in hand to fulfill these requests and to continue our shared mission to make Ohio a better place. This bill is first of its kind. 
It's never been pre presented before in Senate history, which is why we are more than honored to present this bill of support to you as we move forward as a progressive 21st century institution. I'm honored on behalf of all graduate students at the Athens and the Extension campuses to welcome Dr. Nellis and Ruthie to the oldest public educational and research institution in Ohio. In the past few months, I've had the great privilege to work alongside Dr. Nellis on a number of issues that pertain not only to graduate students, but Ohio University and the Athens community as a whole. I'm grateful for your receptiveness to incorporate graduate student voices and appreciate your desire to have representation of graduate students in university affairs and decision making. Dr. Nellis, your principle of listening to all and your desire to make Ohio University competitive for prospective graduate students is a promise to our shared goal. Additionally, we as graduate students are humbled to have for our president a world-renowned scholar, researcher, and teacher who is not only familiar, with, uh, b uh, familiar but a champion for graduate education and the journey it entails. Your commitment to fostering leaders who are equipped to handle the new challenges that face our world is what will continue to make Ohio University a uniquely transformative experience. We look forward to continued partnership and collaboration as you take on the role of Ohio University's 21st president. President Nellis and First Lady Nellis, we wish you the best of luck and welcome home. On behalf of the class Classified staff, I'm honored and pleased to welcome you, Dr. Nellis, to Ohio University, the first and the finest university of the Northwest Territory. I'm personally excited to be working with you, Dr. Nellis, and the other Senate leaders for shared governance and input to envision and shape the future of Ohio University together. The community of classified staff provides support and resources to students, faculty, and administration. We look forward to the future with you as the 21st president of Ohio University as you fulfill our core values of community, character, civility, citizenship, and commitment to become a member of the Ohio family. On behalf of the administrative staff of Ohio University, I'm honored to officially welcome you, Dr. Nellis, to our extraordinary Bobcat family. Our administrators are a remarkable and dedicated group of individuals who serve the students, faculty, and staff in countless ways and are among the finest in higher education. Our partnership, I'm sorry, in partnership with the outstanding faculty, staff, and the best and brightest students around, they represent part of the diverse Bobcat family that makes Ohio University a truly singular and transformative place. Dr. Nellis, you can count on our support to assist you and our colleagues in ensuring that Ohio University continues its over 210 year long legacy of serving as an extraordinary student centered learning experience for all of the lives we touch and in serving as a positive force in our community, state, nation, and world. On behalf of the more than 1,000 faculty of Ohio University, many of whom are in the first few rows, in Athens, Lancaster, Zanesville, Chillicothe, St. Clairsville, Ironton, Dublin, and Cleveland, who daily touch the lives of students in our local communities, the state, nation, and around the world, preparing them for lives in the workforce as engaged and active citizens and as flourishing human beings, and on behalf of a faculty that is a community of scholars dedicated to preserving our shared cultural inheritance and creating every day 
new knowledge, technology, and works of art, we welcome you, Dr. Nellis, as our new colleague in the Department of Geography in the College of Arts and Sciences, and as our university's 21st president. Thank you all for those remarks. Dr. Nellis is a firm believer in shared governance and having each of your voices represented during this program is indicative of that. Since being named president in February, Dr. Nellis has made it his mission to hear as many voices and is to meet as many students, faculty, staff, and alumni as possible. It has been a very busy summer and fall as he embarked upon a listening tour that took him to all campuses and academic colleges of Ohio University. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Dwayne Nellis. Good to see you. I'm the new president. Good to see you. It's been an opportunity during these first few months to truly learn from meeting with people on regional campuses to engaging with uh, community leaders, different community organizations, touring facilities, not only here but on our regional campuses, engaging the state as far as state uh, political leaders, national political leaders. On campus here, I've had the opportunity to, to experience a variety of forums with different colleges where I've had an opportunity to hear the voices from the people that make up this uh, wonderful university community, to hear their perspectives, their dreams, their thoughts on the challenges for this university and truly what makes this a special place. The beauty of the area, the beauty of this campus, to me this campus is unparalleled as far as its beauty. In the United States I've worked at other campuses, I've visited as a consultant a number of campuses and truly this is a special place. The people here are extraordinary. They have a love, a passion for this university. You feel it from the faculty, the staff, the students, the alumni, friends of the university. In every way, you feel that energy that makes this uh, truly an extraordinary place. What gets me excited every day is the opportunity to work with students. I love students. My passion is interacting with students, to engage them in ways to hear their thoughts, uh, but also to help them learn about uh, the world in new ways and to see them blossom as students, to be transformed and to go out and change the world. So even though I've been on this listening tour mode as I transition, I never want to stop listening. I think it's important to always be open to uh, perspectives from the people that I represent as president of Ohio University. I believe strongly in shared governance. And so that means having a constant willingness to participate in collective dialogue about a variety of issues that face the university and to gain perspectives from different constituencies as we move forward. So that is a glimpse into the past few months, but Dr. Nellis' preparation to become Ohio University's 21st president truly began decades ago. And it is now my distinct privilege to introduce a person who can fill in some of the gaps for us, a person who has known Dr. Nellis a very long time and who has traveled from Texas to be here with us today. Please welcome with me our keynote speaker, Cam Lula, Director of the University Research Collaboration and Partnership Office at NASA. Dr. Lula. It's my distinct honor and pleasure this afternoon to be on this beautiful Ohio University campus. Now, if you permit me to say so, I brought you some good weather from Texas. <laughs> I am privileged and honored to be here this afternoon, and I would like to convey my greetings to the distinguished members on the podium, faculty, students, visitors, and some newly minted Ohio friends. Now, Dr. Nellis is being installed as 21st president, so I have about 25 pages. <laughs> but relax, I'm going to be short. 
Now, you may wonder, I think some of you do. I can read minds, that's what they teach us at NASA. <laughs> you may wonder why a NASA executive, a NASA scientist, probably in some of your brains thinks a word bureaucrat or a technocrat is here in this prestigious academic ceremony. Why and what qualifies me to deliver these remarks? Well, first of all, the university did invite me. <laughs> Secondly, I have known Dr. Nellis for a very long time. And by the way, those who are in academia, I would like to tell you that before joining NASA, I did serve my time in academia. I was a university professor for 12 years and then joined NASA. As a matter of fact, I went and took a sabbatical for one year to go to NASA. And 29 years later of sabbatical, I'm still at NASA. <laughs> Ohio University turns out to be a very special place this afternoon for me. Let me digress here for a minute or so to let you know that Ohio University's most famous, or one of the most famous alumnus, PhD in physics, 2009 Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Venkataraman Ramakrishnan, who was an Indian American scientist. He received PhD from Ohio University. And wouldn't you know that he was my cohort, class of 1970, 1971, at the MS University of Baroda in India. <laughs> and we went to school together. We both graduated with undergraduate degrees from the same universities in India. He was a physics major. We were in different departments. I was in geoscience and environmental major. Of course, to be honest, we were not any friends. We were on the campus or campus mates. He came down here and got his PhD in 1977. I stayed at the same university in India and got my first PhD in 1997. I guess that's where the similarity ends. <laughs> But I'm delighted because today, after learning the fact, my good friend and colleague, for a long time, Dr. Nellis, is being installed as 21st president. So I'm very delighted to be here, and thank you for having me. Now, as I was flying from Ohio, to, or rather flying to Ohio from Texas, I was reminiscing about my 35 years of association with Dr. Nellis. As young assistant professors, at that time I was in academia, when I met Dr. Nellis, we were both frequently contributing to our discipline by collaborating, writing grants together, organizing symposia, workshops, going to conferences, attending professional meetings, and so on. In 1988, our paths diverged. I went to NASA, and he continued his life in academia, both research, publications, scholarship, and later in leadership positions. Dr. Nellis, that I know in his earlier career, as well as to this day, is an accomplished research scholar, and the research is sort of ingrained in his being, in his DNA. I have been a chief scientist for Earth observations, remote sensing, and geosciences at NASA for 29 years. I can tell you authoritatively that he has been recognized as one of the most prominent scholars, researchers in remote sensing, geosciences, geographic information sciences, as well as related geospatial technologies. Dr. Nellis has advanced our knowledge of complex land use changes and dynamic processes using satellite remote sensing technologies. He has devoted his efforts not only in interdisciplinary science, but in integrating, integrative science, integrating remote sensing analysis with geographic information systems, as well as other technologies from remote sensing perspective to better understand rapidly transforming planet Earth, our land ecosystems. As a matter of fact, I recall our jointly published first book, 1986. Some of you probably were not born. <laughs> 
uh, Current Trends in Remote Sensing was published. We jointly co-edited and co-authored that book. Fast forward, as I said, I'm not going to read 25 pages. Fast forward, about 20 years later, when I was at NASA, Dr. Nellis and I collaborated on a number of things. One of the things we did was prepare astronaut training materials. I was training astronauts in Earth-looking payloads, Earth observations, digital imaging from space shuttle missions. And Dr. Nellis and I developed astronaut training materials for use on space shuttle missions, as well as on international space stations. Over the years, Dr. Nellis and I have made efforts to integrate our research in a multidisciplinary areas of remote sensing, geospatial technologies, among other things. Now, one of the hot areas in 80s and 90s, and even 2000s, was global change. Both of us got involved in research in global change. And as a matter of fact, uh, we co-authored several papers. But I remember one interesting area where we were looking at global change activities occurring in parts of Africa, and we had a grant to go and look for special, rather, special detected changes in a country of Botswana. Dr. Nellis became a field researcher, and he traveled to Botswana. And our paper was well received, and we published in an inter international journal of conservation biology. Those are a couple of examples. Later, with Tim Warner from West Virginia University and Giles Foody from England, Dr. Nellis published a very important book, Handbook on Remote Sensing, which is a significant contribution that documents the materials on how remote sensing is used in global change applications. One more example about his research and his capability as a scholar. For over 20 years, Dr. Nellis and I have been co-editors of an international remote sensing journal published by Taylor and Francis, one of the premier scientific publishers from UK. This journal started 20 plus years ago. We have been shepherding this journal together as it is now read in more than 79 countries. And this journal actually continues to improve and receive higher scientific impact ratings throughout the world. So I've seen his research and scholarship firsthand. As a matter of fact, as he was doing all this, he was also interested in leadership and administrative positions in academia. While I was at NASA as a chief scientist, he became a department head. While I was at NASA as a chief scientist, he became a provost and dean. <laughs> While I was still a chief scientist, he became a university president. <laughs> but one thing has remained constant. His passion for research and scholarship has never waned his interest has never wavered. Let me briefly talk about his leadership and administrative skills. Dr. Nellis served as a national president of American Association of Geographers. This was a very, very productive year for the association. In addition to a lot of things that the presidents do, he was given added responsibility to ce celebrate 100 years, centennial, of this Honorable Association. I saw firsthand his leadership in putting together a grand celebration for this professional group that consists more than several thousand members. He also delivered, in my opinion, one of the most thought-provoking presidential addresses. I was there. I know that audience was awake. <laughs> Over the years, I've seen all these accomplishments. But I have known him also for all these years as a person. That's very important to me. He's someone who is not only committed to his research and creative activities, he's also committed to collaboration with colleagues. He's committed towards his students. He's interested in making students learn and advance knowledge so they become successful members of the society in this complex global world. Personally, throughout his career, I've admired him for a number of things. I've admired him for his love and passion for discovery and learning, his desire, of course, to help colleagues and students. More importantly, his commitment, real commitment, to diversity, inclusion, and listening to diverse opinions. 
his unwavering support for his family and his friends. As you can expect, Dr. Nellis, as a result of all these accomplishments, both as a scholar, researcher, and administrator and a leader, has received many, many awards. I wouldn't go into the list of awards, but mention a couple. He's a fellow of American Association for Advancement of Science, a prestigious fellowship. He's a fellow of Explorers Club New York, a prestigious fellowship. He's a distinguished alum of Oregon State University. But he tells me that among many awards, his most coveted awards are as a university distinguished teacher, researcher, and a student advisor. So my dear friends, this is the kind of Dr. Nellis I have known for more than 35 years. Now, we know, all know, you heard our speakers before, that globally, globally, there is a transformation going on in higher education. And this global transformation is challenging our universities, not in, only in Ohio, but all over the country, to face new challenges, to face new issues, but also provide new opportunities on many fronts so that we can move this global enterprise of higher education forward. You have, Ohio University, my friends, you have in Dr. Nellis a leader who has not only scholarship experience, but experience in leadership and administration to lead this great institution to even higher achievements, not only for this generation of learners, but also for future generations who will shape the destiny of not only the great state of Ohio, but of our nation. Thank you so much for hearing me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lula, for providing us with that unique perspective. Dwayne Nellis is truly a remarkable and accomplished person and an academic to his core. We are so fortunate that he has decided to come here to Ohio University. Each day of Inauguration Week, we had a theme. These themes have been centered around a few of President Nellis's priorities. Ohio for Ohio Day, Sustainability Day, Day of Service, Bobcat Pride Day, and this is truly a university-wide celebration, and if you have been on social media at all this week, you will have seen that. Today is Legacy Day. Dr. Nellis is inheriting a strong 213-year legacy of academic excellence, but as we have heard, he brings with him an, an impressive legacy of his own. We will now all look to him to guide us into the future and to advance the legacy of Ohio University. So now let us mark this special moment in our program and in our distinguished history with song. Tell me of a home where the storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me. 
Thank you, Dr. Paul Mayhew and the University Singers for that beautiful song. It is now my privilege to begin the investiture portion of this ceremony. Dr. Nellis, will you please join me at the podium? And I would also ask Dr. David Moore, Secretary to the Board of Trustees, to join us as well. Dr. Moore is carrying the 13th century illuminated Bible manuscript that will be used in the administration of the oath of office. All symbols used in this afternoon's ceremony are described in your program. So Dr. Nellis, will you please raise your right hand, placing your left hand on the Bible, and repeat after me. I, Marvin Dwayne Nellis, do solemnly swear. I, Marvin Dwayne Nellis, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute and discharge. That I will faithfully execute and discharge. The duties of the office of the president of Ohio University. The duties of the office of the president of Ohio University. That I will devote my energies to the advancement of higher education in Ohio, in the nation, and in the world. That I will devote my energies to higher education in Ohio, the nation, and the world. And that I will, to the best of my ability, and that I will, to the best of my ability, support and defend the constitutions of the United States and the state of Ohio. Support and defend the constitutions of the state of Ohio and the United States. Thank you. Now, Dave Scholl, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, will present the seal of office to President Nellis. President Nellis, it is my privilege to present to you the Presidential Seal of Office. Designed by the late Professor of Art, David Klon, this seal is the symbolic representation of the authority of your office and is to be worn for all official university occasions. And I now ask Dr. Charles Ping, President Emeritus of Ohio University, to present to President Nellis the Charter of Ohio University. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. You're doing great. Ohio University was chartered in 1804. Thus, it is the oldest university in all the land west of the Alleghenies, public university. It is its great tradition that Ohio University is also the first land-grant institution with a grant from the Continental Congress. Holding this charter identifies you as the steward of a remarkable history and the architect of its future. Thank you, Dr. Ping. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Ping. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great honor to present to you your 21st president of Ohio University, Dr. Dwayne Nellis. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Madam Chair, Ohio University trustees, faculty, students, staff, alumni, friends, and other honored guests. I am extremely honored and humbled to serve as the 21st president of Ohio University, an institution that Ruthie and I have come to love and feel privileged now to call our home. I truly consider this the capstone of my career. Ohio University's third president, Robert G. Wilson, understood well the responsibility that rests on my shoulders. In his inaugural address in 1824, he said, this job requires extensive learning and daily watchfulness and it must be unavoidably involve me in perplexing toil and great responsibility. Having been a university president before, I know he is right, but rest assured, I'm up for the daily perplexing toil and great responsibilities associated with this job. My pursuit of this academic experience would not have been possible without an amazing person by my side in my wife, Ruthie. Thank you, Ruthie, for your tremendous support of me throughout my career. From the moment we met as undergraduates, you've been with me throughout the rainbows of the experiences that reflect our lives together. You are truly my best friend, Ruthie. Thank you very much again. Thank you. I would also like to thank Trustee Emeritus David Wolfert and members of the search committee, as well as Madam Chair King and the Ohio University Board of Trustees who have given Ruthie and me this special opportunity to serve this great institution. Sitting in the front row is a very special group of students that I would like to recognize. This is their first public appearance as a group, so this is a very special moment. Please stand, members of the Presidential Leadership Society. These students were selected after a university-wide two-week application process that yielded more than 150 submissions from all colleges and most regional campuses of Ohio University. The result is a diverse group of 21 talented undergraduate students, a magical number, right, 21, for the 21st president. In addition, we have four graduate students and one from our Ohio University regional campuses. The presidential leaders will give their time and talents to advance my priorities and initiatives for the betterment of this fine university. They each possess a passion for Ohio University, and I look forward to working with each one and every one of them. Thank you again for being part of the Presidential Leadership Society. Let's give them another round of applause. Appreciate it. And thank you. You may be seated. As we all know, we're living in an age of knowledge. It is marked by dramatic and far-reaching social, political, and economic changes, redefining in many ways the redistribution of ideas, capital, goods, labor, and services. We're now in a world where most of our students have only known the global dimensions of the internet where technology has changed much of what we do, and where these students must be prepared for and contend with unprecedented change as they strive to find new ways to prosper and enhance the quality of life. We must prepare our students not just to survive in this world, but to thrive and lead in this world. 
According to a recent report published by Jeffrey Salingo, human knowledge is doubling every 13 months. As the pace of technological change is reaching exponential levels, we must be prepared to provide our students with the ability to address changes that they do not know yet exist and to solve problems yet unknown, likely using technology yet to be discovered. All the while, we're living at a point in time where there's less support than ever for higher education, even as the need and demand for college are at their highest level ever. As Kathy Davidson recently stated in her book, The New Education, we know from numerous studies that the expansion of college beyond educating the elites has provided a pathway to the middle class and has been crucial to our democracy. In a world of social media, fake news, and alternative facts, where more and more people are questioning the importance of a college degree, I feel called to defend higher education and its role in upholding our democracy. Thank you. When the history of this era is written, I think we will all be remembered for how we responded when our central mission to educate the people of the world was dismissed as simply a waste of money. Knowledge is priceless, wisdom is invaluable, and love is essential. So enter that daily thou us may grow in knowledge, wisdom, and love. As many of you know, this message is inscribed on the alumni gateway and greets all who enter the college green. As we consider our individual and collective responsibility to support our students' personal, professional, and scholarly growth, we must also consider the present moment an opportunity to chart a new path to redefine public higher education. We at Ohio University are a national leader in experiential learning a national laboratory for engaged learning. In so doing, we're continuing to demonstrate that we are our nation's best transformative learning community. Our students have unique and unparalleled opportunities for learning that extends the classroom to our community, this special region, and the world. We understand that opportunities for research and creative activity should be offered starting at the undergraduate level. Distinguished Professor John Kopchak, who's here today, has inspired more than 350 undergraduate researchers in his lab over the last 30 years. But he's not alone in his commitment to providing our students with, with rich opportunities for discovery and creative activity. It is a devotion to our students' intellectual growth, like that of Dr. Kopchak and many many other faculty and staff, engaging students in scholarship that is going to elevate Ohio University to become the highest level of research and creative institution. I've seen it in our labs, music and art studios, and innovation spaces. I have talked with brilliant minds who work and study there. I can feel it. We're on the cusp of achieving higher levels of research success as we aspire to the highest of Carnegie Foundation classification that I know so many of you, including me, believe we deserve. Through our efforts, as we strive for even higher levels of excellence, we will build on this institution's tremendous spirit of innovation. So, what, so much of what I'm going to say today is drawn from what I have learned since June 12th, my first official day of my presidency. Since my arrival, I have visited all the regional campuses, the Dublin and Cleveland campuses, and all the colleges, as well as the library. Over the past four months, I've gained insights through public forums and informal gatherings with thousands of faculty, students, staff, alumni, and friends of this great university. And through this input and my commitment to shared governance, I have developed key strategic pathways that reflect the diverse voices I have heard. I wanted to make these visits because I will be a visible leader with a real presence on our campuses and because I will build strong relationships with 
all of our university campuses, from deans, faculty, to our staff, students, and alumni, all of whom contribute to the academic excellence that is a signature of Ohio University. So let me thank all of you for being such welcoming, gracious hosts the past few months and for allowing me to learn from you. As someone who is proud to be an academic and an academic leader, being able to serve this exemplary university means more to me than I can say. I have truly enjoyed interacting with all of you. What I have learned from my conversations in the state and region is that there is no other place I would rather be than here. This is a tra transitional moment in history. At this great university, surrounded by the Appalachian foothills, where we are deeply involved in this singular place, committed to community, a scholarly community, dedicating to making progress in areas of teaching, research, and creative activity, as well as sustainability, connectivity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and service to our global society. I have come to realize from our discussions that the great institution, this great institution is poised to reach higher levels of excellence. I believe that we can do so through strategic pathways and priorities, pathways and priorities that will continue to define and redefine Ohio University as a leading edge public research university. We will bolster our tremendous legacy of serving our region, our state, the nation, and the world in new and dynamic ways. Clearly, now more than ever, we must commit to articulating our value proposition as Ohio's first and finest university. The first key strategic pathway is our continued and bolstered efforts to be a national leader for diversity and inclusion. We must establish an environment at Ohio University where difference in all of its forms are welcomed and celebrated. We must be proud of the progress we've made thus far while still not losing sight of the work that is yet to be done. After I started my presidency in June of this year, interim executive vice President and Provost Dr. Descutner and I made the decision to appoint Dr. Jason Pina as interim chief diversity officer in addition to his duties as vice president for student affairs. It is our intention that Dr. Pina's appointment would further strengthen the collaboration between the division of student affairs and the office of diversity and inclusion during this interim period, paving the way for a deeper bond into the future. We are now studying with input from our constituencies where we are as an institution relative to diversity and inclusion. What we learn from this effort will inform our strategic thinking about how to strengthen this important dimension of our university. Today I'm pleased to announce that I've made the decision with strong support of my colleagues to elevate this chief diversity position from vice provost to a new vice presidency for diversity and inclusion. Thank you. We will begin a national search in the near future to find the right person to help us become the national model for diversity and inclusion. This person will directly report to me in my role as president of the university. With this new title will come additional support and recognition of this important leadership position in our university which will define our university as a place of excellence in the areas of inclusion, inclusion and social justice. We again need to be a national leader, leader in the area as we were in 1824 when we admitted the first African American student to Ohio University nearly 40 years before the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. I'm challenging each of our deans, excuse me, other administrative chairs and directors, faculty, students, and staff leaders to enhance our efforts in this area and specifically to focus on recruiting a more diverse staff, faculty, staff, and student body while ensuring there's a supportive, inclusive environment across all the campuses of Ohio University. 
We are all responsible for this very important work, and a new vice president will help us get there. The second strategic pathway is an elevation of our student recruitment programs, our academic success programs, our initiatives to enhance teaching, and our overall academic quality as an institution. Each college and campus visit revealed a consistent and ongoing commitment to high achieving student recruitment, success, and access to excellence. It is clear we take great pride in these initiatives at Ohio University. We celebrate student success in its many forms, from improving our retention and graduation rates to students receiving national and international recognition and co co competitive awards. And trust me when I say that during each college and campus visit, I was never asked to do less in this area, but rather that we need to do more by exploring fresh ways to create more opportunities for engagement and learning. So that's what I intend to do. The Ohio University Honors Tutorial College, one of our nation's top honors programs, is a hallmark for engaged learning, and it provides a unique experience, one unlike any I have witnessed uh, at any public university in the United States. We want to ensure that students in that college have every opportunity for learning and engagement. Today, with the strong endorsement from our university community, I'm pleased to announce the creation of a task force that will be charged with developing expeditiously a pathway to a sustainable, robust, and expanded university-wide honors program. I envision this program as not replacing the Honors Tutorial College, but complementing and enriching our efforts to enhance our ability to attract the best and the brightest students to our university, Ohio University. <laughs> Part of enhancing our students' academic experience is a recognition of the state-of-the-art learning paradigms that engage students in new ways and across multiple disciplines of study. As I mentioned earlier, Ohio University has a strong tradition of providing students with service learning and experiential learning opportunities in a diverse set of communities, both nationally and internationally. Our university college, with the help from other colleges, has in place a center for campus and community engagement that has been very successful. But building a university-wide academic culture that celebrates experiential learning in its wide range of forms must be part of today's student experience. Therefore, building a university engagement ecosystem is my third central strategic pathway. Ohio University's geographic location at the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains is distinct compared to other colleges and universities in the country. I believe we can be a model in our nation in this area, a positive catalyst of economic and quality of life change for Appalachia. We have the opportunity to make a real difference in this region through the combined efforts of virtually every one of our colleges and schools, as well as our regional campuses. We must lead through helping to coordinate with communities throughout our region to, to develop approaches that look to new and sustainable economies through innovation and other strategic support. The new engagement office will report to the provost. This office will build upon the great work occurring in the Center for Campus and Community Engagement and elevate the ongoing efforts, strengthen our ability to expand opportunities, build a database to capture the work of our faculty, staff, and students, and by so doing, help to create an engagement ecosystem. And again, this office will poise us to more effectively build new partnerships across our university with the community and extend the work of our faculty, staff, and students into our region, communities, our state, nation, and the world. Just one week ago, we were honored to have Dreamland author Sam Kononis as the Grover Lecturer. In his talk, he said, we go to college to be disrupted. And that leads me to the fourth strategic pathway. We live in intriguing times, not only because of the pace of change, but also because of the clash and convergence of ideas, 
values, and issues. It matters how we, as an intellectual community, talk about these ideas, values, and issues. My aspiration is that Ohio University become known as a place where dialogue and rigorous civil debate are institutional hallmarks. To that end, I intend to create a campus-wide lecture series around difficult dialogues. I am framing this pathway as the Ohio Challenging Dialogues on Contemporary Issues. We need to build on our rich history at Ohio University of activism and thought-provoking dialogue and debate to create an environment where we're comfortable with conflicting viewpoints on a range of issues and always act respectfully and in a civil way towards people with different points of view. We learn together from such challenging conversations and thereby affirm our commitment to intellectual diversity. I will work with our Ohio University Foundation to identify funds to support such a lecture series. Thank you. In addition to these four strategic pathways are 10 other strategic priorities that I believe will build on our strengths and I'd like to briefly mention them to you. They include the strategic need to strengthen our global engagement efforts. This includes creating more opportunities for students to study abroad as well as recruiting more international students to Ohio University. In fact, today, one of our key strategic friends in this global endeavor is with us. I'm honored to have the new president of Chubu University with us, Dr. Ishihara. Dr. Ishihara, if you'd stand and let's recognize him. I thank him for being here and thank his predecessor as well for what we celebrate each spring on our campus through the beauty of the cherry blossoms that were a gift of the president of Chubu University to our Ohio University in, uh, for our 175th anniversary. We must also enhance support for our outstanding faculty and staff. We value all people who are employed at Ohio University. Appropriate compensation and benefits are an important, and I believe that the leadership is not just about position. All in our university family are leaders through performing the great work that they do with the responsibilities that they have. From our groundskeepers to our office support staff to our distinguished professors, chairs, and directors, we must, we must continue to invest in our outstanding faculty and staff, and we must find effective ways to retain faculty and staff as they commit their careers to us and we commit our institutional support to them. Then there is the strategic need to enhance graduate student stipends and related benefits. It is imperative, it is imperative that we address this issue over the next few years as we demonstrate our support for our, this critically important group of students. And I'll work with the Ohio University Foundation and members of my leadership team to identify new resources to address this important need. We also need to strengthen our public service mission. Today, I endorse our Ohio for Ohio efforts, but with a strategic priority that focuses on the integration of our campus locations and networks. We need to support more fully invigorated partnerships from regional, for our regional success. These partnerships will support lighting up the broadband for Southeast Ohio, for example. Very crucial. They will also help us breathe new life into the ridges by continuing our partnership and collaborating with our university community, but even more importantly, with our Athens community. We will also engage with our regional campus affiliated communities to support new ways to jumpstart economic development and quality of life for this entire region. We will do so to create greater synergies and efficiencies, and as a result, better serve the statewide umbrella that is Ohio University. We've seen how such efforts can be successful. Consider how, how our partnership with Ohio Health and the Cleveland Clinic 
as well as in Dublin, have benefited our Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine and our College of Health Sciences and Professions. We will be a national model for synergistic opportunities as celebrated by the great work of our, of our university through the colleges of fine arts, business, arts and sciences, the Patton College, the Voinovich School, the Scripps College, the Russ College, our regional campuses, university libraries, our innovation colleges, our innovation center, and our other colleges as well. Directly related to these integrative efforts is our need for strategic support for, to incentivize interdisciplinary collaborations. Our faculty and students are asking for us to move more fully into this arena, and we have witnessed the success of these initiatives. Consider how effective our interdisciplinary collaborations have been in addressing regional, state, national, and global issues related to sustainability, protection of the environment, and health, and wellness as well. A prime example here are the interdisciplinary collaborations across multiple colleges around health systems and wellness that are seeking solutions for population health problems tied to obesity, diabetes, and the opioid addictions. Next, we must seek a more robust Ohio online engaged learning enterprise. Currently, over 6,000 students are taking online courses as a cornerstone of our strategic enrollment plan, we seek to increase that number even as we decide, dedicate ourselves to the highest quality of educational experience for those students. A strategic priority forwards is expanding what I'm calling our worldwide Ohio web learning. Wow learning, <laughs> which builds on our recent success in this area. We must remain vigilant and strategic in enhancing our campus infrastructure and ensuring a sustainable financial model. In this context, we must support all that is Ohio University, from the fine arts to arts and sciences to engineering, medicine, and places in between. It is crucial that we develop a funding model that not only sustains the financial health of the university, but allows us to invest strategically in people, pedagogy, research, creative activities, and infrastructure in order that we advance our university to new levels of national and international prominence. We must enhance our national position as a leading edge learning laboratory for sustainability. The efficacy of our innovative efforts around sustainability cannot be overstated. In just the last four years, for example, we've seen a 300% increase in sustainability courses as components of courses on our campuses. We also now have more efficient campuses with a commitment to LEED certification as we renovate our older buildings and erect new buildings. And we have the largest in-vessel compost facility of any university in the country for too long, and I'm proud of that. For too long, for too long, we've been the best kept secret. It's time for us to take our branding and our marketing efforts to greater heights and find new strategic consistent and rhetorically powerful ways to talk about this amazing institution. It's really important. In partnership with Renee Morris, our Chief Marketing Officer, our deans, vice president, faculty, staff, and students, as well as our alumni and others, we will develop a brand that resonates with the national and international audience one that speaks to how we're leading the way in providing access to excellence. We have great stories to tell, such as Drs. Nancy Stevens and Pat Connor and their colleagues' recent fossil discovery in Tanzania that reverberates throughout the scientific world. Also reverberating in a quality way is our Marching 110, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. They'll be performing in the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving Day in New York City and showing the world that we are the best marching band in the land. <laughs> and just Monday, astrophysicist Ryan Chornock 
was one of a group of international scientists who made the first visual observation of a confirmed neutron star merger and have documented a visual counterpart to a gravitational wave detection. This is, was announced by the National Science Foundation and is a major discovery. These are international news headlines coming out of Ohio University and just a few of the big stories that have recently received media attention. And there are many others that have not and we need to be more effective in telling our story. Finally, we need to strategically reconnect our 232,000 strong alumni base. In all my experience in higher education, I have never encountered a more passionate alumni group than those associated with Ohio University. We must engage them throughout their lives in a commitment to Ohio University's first and finest. I look forward to continuing to work on this goal with Perry Sook, chair of our Ohio University Foundation Board, and with Ron Toplinski, chair of the Ohio University Alumni Association Board of Directors, along with many others. Together, we'll make new strategic investments in offices in places like Columbus, Cleveland, and possibly New York City and other locations to strengthen our philanthropic efforts. Together, we'll reach new levels of success that will allow us to secure ever-increasing private support of our key strategic pathways and priorities for this very, very special place. As your 21st president, I'm humbled by the legacy I'm inheriting, a legacy that began some 213 years ago on the frontier of a vast wilderness. Fundamentally, our legacy is one of academic excellence as we've graduated some of our nations and world's leading journalists, business persons, engineers, writers, scientists, artists, sports administrators, medical doctors, nurses, educators, ceramicists, musicians, political leaders, just to mention a few of the fields in which our graduates excel. I challenge all of you here today, all of you here today, to work with me, to work with me in shared governance as we take this shining star on the banks of the Hawking River to new levels of national and international prominence. From the Ohio Company Associates drafting of the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 in Boston that set the stage for our beloved Ohio University through our founding fathers, Manasseh Cutler and Rufus Putnam, and building on the legacy of academic excellence that many of you here today helped create, including past presidents like Vern Alden, Dr. Charlie Ping, Bob Glidden, and Rod McDavis, I'm honored again and humbled to serve as your 21st president. But I can't help but feel a sense of urgency. We have to get this right no matter what the challenges or barriers we encounter as an institution of teaching, learning, research, and service, we have a, an obligation to future generations. The new world of Ohio University starts here. We must succeed. We must be a model, not only for our nation, but for the generations that will come after us. We must embrace the individual and collective work that will be necessary to advance the distinctive legacy of this singular place. So depart that daily thou mayest better serve thy fellow men and women, thy country, and thy God. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Nellis, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we appreciate those priorities and we are eager and committed to be on this journey with you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let us officially welcome President Nellis and First Lady Nellis into the Bobcat family through song, one of the most cherished songs of Ohio University. Please stand if you are able and join the university singers in the singing of Alma, Alma Mater, Ohio. For those who do not know the words by heart, you can find them printed in the back of your program or up on the screens. Thank you, University Singers. Please be seated. Today, you all have been a part of Ohio University history. This now marks the conclusion of the investiture ceremony, but the beginning of an even brighter future for Ohio University. You are all welcome to join President and First Lady Nellis, the Board of Trustees, and all our honored guests for a reception on College Green. So please stay and celebrate with us. We just ask that you please remain seated until the platform party has recessed. Thank you and have a great afternoon.